Well, first and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the Brother Shakti from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope was another quick and edifying sit down. And today's lesson is inspired uh, by some madness that was put on the comment board. It responds to the, uh, my video, You Can't Have It Both Ways. And this person was, they don't want to show it, but uh, nonetheless, we can still find it. We're going to go to, this is the comment that was left by somebody named Larnell Lott. And it says, you people are fools. Is not Esau and Jacob twin brothers? Did not Esau and Jacob come from the same father and mother? Esau is your people. If they are low men and base men, so is Jacob, fool. They came from the same family tree. As it is written, good trees produce good fruit, bad trees produce bad fruit. You are accusing your brothers of being exactly to be what you are. As it is written, hypocrite, you are wicked just like your brother. All your people's wicked acts are recorded in that book you hold so dearly. And just like your brother, your people fucked up the world too because the book only speaks of your people. Now, of course, when I went to this person, Larnell Lott's page, view channel, as you can see, there are absolutely no works whatsoever on this person's page. So this leads me to believe that this is just some scoffer, internet troll, or some type of AI, you know. But regardless, he has nothing that even remotely says that he pays attention to the scripture or does he even pick up the Bible in the first place? But nonetheless, we're going to uh, address a lot of this madness on here. So it says, you people are fools. It says, it's not Esau and Jacob twin, but yes, that is correct. That is very much correct. Esau and Jacob are twin brothers. However, it says, did not Esau and Jacob come from the same mother and father? Yes, they did. It says, Esau is your people. And it says, if they are low men and base men, so is Jacob, fool. They came from the same family tree. Now, obviously, that's, that's where he's going off on. See, this, along with his website, lets me know that this guy is just, this guy is he's not even unwise. Or right, he's just a flat out idiot. Okay? Because when you go to the scripture, when we go to the story of Jacob and Esau in Genesis the 25th chapter, we're going to go to the Nineteenth verse. This is Genesis twenty-five and nineteen, as it says, "And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, and daughter of Bethuel the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren, and Yahweh was entreated of him. And Rebekah his wife conceived." And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Basically, after being barren for so long, and now I'm pregnant, why, why does this pregnancy feel more like a burden than it is a blessing? Okay. And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. 
So you got this scoffer, Mr. Larnell, who said that we are the same people, saying that if Esau is a base man, so is Jacob. They come from the same family tree. No, the Bible said that they are two nations, meaning two separate nations. Let's continue. Are in thy womb and two manner of people, two different nations with two different types of spirits, okay, or two types of, uh, of mentalities. It says, and two manner of people shall be separated <laughs> from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. All right, and so it says. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So wait a minute, let's go back to verse 23. And it says, And one people shall be stronger than the other, which we all know that that's Jake. Okay, you look at any type of sporting event, you look at the UFC, you look at boxing, you look at wrestling, taekwondo, judo, okay, tennis, basketball, you name it. Jake clearly outshines Esau. I mean, it, it's not even... <laughs> it, it, it's not even... Uh, if you even want to call it a competition, man, there's it's no comparison. You know? And it says, and the elder shall serve the younger. So wait a minute, Mr. Larnell, or Mrs. Larnell, or you could be both. Uh, it says, Esau is your people. If they are low men and base men, so is Jacob, who they come from the same family tree. But the scripture just said that the elder shall serve the younger. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and called his name Esau. As we all know when you read further down who came out second, Jacob. So how can we be on the same level? And Esau is going to be serving us. Now, that's in the physical sense. Now, let's uh, to scroll down and read. And it says, And after that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Now, brothers have done many sit-downs on that word plain, but we're just going to get this for Mr. or Mrs. Larnell. Okay, Genesis 25th chapter, and let's go to the 27th verse, and we're going to get the word, the Hebrew word for plain. Because you know Mr. Larnell did not read this, or else he wouldn't have said such an asinine statement. Okay. Plain is thong. Strong's H, 8535. Tom. Tom. Okay. Perfect. Complete. Complete. Perfect. One who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty, etc. Etc. meaning basically every aspect of human nature. Okay. Sound. Wholesome. An ordinary quiet sort of person. Complete. Morally innocent. Having integrity. One who is morally and ethically pure. It says pious, Strong's definition, pious, specifically gentle, dear, coupled together, perfect, plain, undefiled, upright. 
Now, Mr. Larnell, Miss Larnell, however you choose to call yourself. Now, if Jacob is such a base man, why would they use this word to describe him? Come on now. Jacob is described as being absolutely perfect. Basically, the Lord bless Jacob with the best of everything a human could possibly have. Body, brains, speed, intelligence, integrity, agility, spiritual uprightness, fortitude, pride, compassion, bravery. The, the Lord just blessed them with a perfect portion of all of it, and he made it balanced in its absolute perfection. That's how Jacob is described. So let's let, let's hear the description of a bad Uncle Esau, who is the so-called white man. Let's get a few scriptures that describe bad Uncle Esau. Let's go to Malachi, do, 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 do. the first chapter. Let's start at one. It says, the burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. It says, I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I, oh, yet I love Jacob. So yes, Mr. Lana, as I told you, you were right. Jacob and Esau were brothers. But they were two manner of people. And as we just read the definition of the word plain to describe Jacob, it means he was completely perfect in every single way you could think of. Now, let's hear how it describes bad Uncle Esau. It says, and I hated Esau. Hated Esau. The Lord hates Esau. And it says, and laid his mountains waste, his government, his power structure. And his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, but will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of ooh, wickedness. And the people against the whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. And our indignation means righteous hatred, righteous anger. But we're going to get that. In the blue letter for Mr. Larnell, because he seems like he might, he or she might be kind of slow. So, uh, let me hit that word indignation. Za, za ain, I think it is. Strong's H2194. Za am. Za am. So it says to denounce, express indignation, be indignant, to have indignation, be indignant, be angrily indignant, be defiant, to be abhorrent, to express indignation in speech, denounce, curse, to show indignation, show anger. It says to be enraged, abhor, abominable, be angry, defy. Ooh wee. So it says the Lord. is going to have an, an angry, indignant attitude towards bad Uncle Esau forever. Now, forever in this sense literally means forever. Let's get there. Just so... <laughs> Strong's H5769 Olam Olam So it says long duration Antiquity Futurity forever Ever Everlasting Evermore Perpetual Oh 
ancient world, ancient time, long time of past, of future, forever, always, continuous existence. Perpetual, everlasting, indefinite, or unending future, eternity. Whew. So the Lord said he loved Jacob, but he has an eternal, a never unending hatred for bad uncle Esau. So, Mr. Lornell, where where are you where are you getting this this breakdown that if I make a video and explain how bad Uncle Esau is the wicked, how do you how do you who taught you or how did you come to this breakdown? Let's let's read some more of this madness that Mr. Lornell and it says It says, as it is written, good trees produce good fruit, bad trees produce bad fruit. You are accusing your brothers of being exactly to be what you are. No, I'm not. What did the scripture just say? Jacob is pure and perfect and God loves him. Esau is the wicked. He's evil and God hates him. Come on, man. A, a three-year-old could understand that. And it says, as it is written, you are wicked, hypocrite. You are wicked, just like your brother. All your people, wicked acts are recorded in the book you hold so dearly. And just like your brother, your people fucked up the world, too, because the book only speaks of your people. Now, the Bible is written specifically for us, but... No one has messed up the world like bad Uncle Esau has. Nobody. All right. What time in history, in human history, have you heard of chemtrails being in the world, uh, in, in the air? Or I had it right the first time, chemtrails being in the world. AIDS. Okay, when in, in, in any time in the history have you ever heard of a garbage island the size of Texas? What time in, in human history do you know where you got mass uh, of, of classes of aquatic life beaching themselves? I mean, I could keep going on and on, but these things are done by bad Uncle Esau. There's no nation in the world that's done the wickedness that these guys have done. Why? Because even though they don't have the law to be righteous, but the Lord didn't make them the wicked. They've done wicked stuff. But they aren't the wicked, as we just read in Malachi. And hey, you know what? Just to put a little icing on that cake. We all know what I'm going to get in Maccabees. Verse Maccabees 1. And it says, and we're going to get straight to the point. It says, so Alexander, this is First Maccabees 1 and 7. It says, so Alexander reigned 12 years. This is talking about Alexander the snake. And it says, and then died. And his servants bear rule, everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. So basically, the nation of Edom did things to such an extreme that the likes of it had never been done before that time. As I said, evils were multiplied in the earth. That means anything wicked you could think of or haven't thought of, it just went to the extreme once they came into power. 
So, hey man, this, who, whoever you are, Mr. Larnell, Lot, you just need to get off the comic board. You need to get off YouTube, all right? Obviously, by your, your statement, hey, you, you're not trying to get right with the Lord. So just go sit down, have a Coke and a smile, and let the men of the Lord do what they're supposed to do, all right? Even though the Bible predicts, predicted people like you, scoffers, in the last days there'll be scoffers, because you are one. Because anybody who's read the Bible and has some basic understanding would not leave a comment like this. But just as the righteous have to fulfill their lot, hey man, the wicked of this world, they got to fulfill their lot too. So uh, nonetheless, that's all I wanted to speak on. On this subject, I just wanted to address you know, this scoffer, Mr. Larnell Lott, of course, you know, as the scripture says, we got to come in defense of the gospel. But nonetheless, I hope you all were edified. And until the next time, we're going to say Shalom.